Good morning creators and welcome to another UFN tutorial. This is episode 2 of the Landscape Paint Maestro series. And in this episode you're going to learn how to do height blending which is going to take your blurry mess of a landscape paint from this to something a little crisper. Um, if you're just now joining us, the full series is going to be linked below the playlist, so check out every single episode. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. All right, with our material open, I'm going to first introduce you to the concept of height blending. So just to present this, I'm going to get a texture coordinate. I'm going to mask, let's say, the, uh, the red channel. And then... I want to just showcase like what what's going on here. I'm going to get a noise node and just preview this, make sure we get some nice noise here. Uh, I'm going to just use a cube for this uh, easy representation. I'm going to crank the scale down so I have um, more obvious patterns. And then I just want to go ahead and change the output from 0 to 1. All right. And so basically, we're going to blend between this gradient, which is just going to be like the blend gradient of your landscape paint. And this noise texture is going to be what you height lerp to. And so there's a few ways you can do this. The first way I'll show you is step. And I believe this goes into X, and then the noise goes into Y. If that's wrong, I will correct myself. But you'll see you have this kind of sharp gradient where when it's closer to 1, it's fuller, but when it's closer to 0, it becomes dark. And so that's that's the motivation between... between uh, Oh, that's motivation behind height lerping um, to create this gradient because it's a lot nicer than just a plain bland gradient, especially for something like terrain that's going to be rocky. Um, and so this noise texture could be a lot of things. It could be a 3D noise. It could be um, any kind of zero to one value. Um, you could even use like a texture, uh, a noise texture. They have a few in here for search for noise. Actually, it's probably easier just to get a texture sample. Um, you could use any of these noise textures. And then you could use the uh, world aligned texture that we discussed yesterday. Or we can um, use the landscape chords as mapping and so this will map basically projected from the top down and this works pretty well or if you want to do world line texture for those cliffs that are going to be you know angled height wise and you don't want to stretch um like the landscape chords will and once again this all this was covered in the previous video so hopefully i don't have to talk about it too much but you could try this and that's a different kind of noise and yeah you have a lot of variety here but that's the gist of it um Obviously, this step is very harsh. Um, so there's a few things we could do. There's another node called smooth step, which kind of does a similar thing, but it's more of a gradient rather than a harsh 0 or 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this x into the value. So the gradient goes into the value. And then the noise is going to go into the min. If I preview this and I did it right, it should look a lot nicer. Now you have values from 0 to 1. You have a nice transition there. And that'll just look a lot nicer. So that's the motivation in this video. We're trying to accomplish something that looks good. Um, and the components of it is how you're going to blend it. And I would recommend just using step or smooth step because either of them kind of do, the, do a good job. Um, you need your gradient, which could either be your slope mask um, just as a reminder, this has a nice gradient. Um, if I go into a sphere, it has this gradient right here. Um, or it could be your landscape layer sample, which I can't preview here because I don't, I don't have it on the mesh. But um, 
this blend right here you can use. Uh, and so that's what we're going to play around with. So really the magic is in what kind of blend mode you're using and what kind of noise you're using. And maybe how you use it, but that's truly up to you. Um, let's start off by making a slope mask. You'll notice here right now, uh, if I get like a sharper, um, sharper slope, let's give me something a little sharper here. The grass just kind of blends into that stone texture. And that's kind of okay, but it's just, maybe it's not what we want. So let's try, let's try just going to the slope mask. And sorry, this is my other material. <laughs> um, and just doing something there. All right, so we have a gradient. Let's try a step. Let's do something harsh, just to see what it looks like. And I'll go ahead and just use this uh, landscape chords in a texture sample just to see what it looks like. And I just need the R channel because you don't really need the RGB. Um, you just don't. And that's your slope mask. Um, if I preview this, it's going to look a little bit weird on Sphere, admittedly. Um, but let me let me compile this and I'll get back to you. All right, already we're seeing this nice gradient here. So let's see what it looks like in game. Oh wow. Yeah, it's definitely harsh, um, and it's definitely very very, it's very very small. So we can adjust that. We we want to uh, adjust that a little bit. So let's go into our landscape chords and we're gonna go ahead and I think. Divide, and let's do like, I don't know, say 25. Let's do something drastic. Maybe we'll have too much, but let's find out. All right, so now you should see the, the gradient's a lot, a lot nicer that it's larger. It's still stretching because that's just how those things work. But honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Um, maybe a little too harsh for my liking, but you know, it's not horrible. It's workable. Um, yeah, it's kind of good. I like that. Um, what if we want to go for something smoother? Let's use a smooth step. So I'm going to put this um, mask into the value and I'm going to put the R channel into the min. And we'll go ahead and put that in our slope mask. And hope I don't have to wait an hour for shaders to compile. All right, it's definitely a lot more gradual and maybe a little hard to tell. Um, it's, it's not too bad though. It's a little smoother. Um, I'll show you an additional trick if you like the harshness, but you don't want it to be too harsh. You could just lerp between the two. So hold L and then uh, right click. And so right now this is a 50% lerp. Um, if you have it zero, it's on step. If you have it on one, it's on smooth step. But if you have it at 0.5, it's a smooth lerp between the two. Um, let's just see what that looks like. It might be, might be good. Oh, the waiting I have to do. All right, now we should be good. Give it a second. Ah, uh, that looks kind of ugly. But maybe it's a skin. Actually, no, it's the slope I'm supposed to be looking at. I was looking at the, I'm sorry, I was looking at the edges here. Um, it's a slope that I need to be looking at. But this actually looks kind of cool, the way it's blending, but it's still kind of harsh. But like you can kind of see the rocks laid on top of this grass maybe with better blending it would make sense but honestly this looks pretty good it's interesting um, i just want to go back because i didn't give this a proper look <laughs> i'm sorry i don't mean to backtrack but <laughs> yeah honestly this looks pretty decent 
the smooth lerp, smooth, uh, smooth step looks really good. Um, definitely less bland. All right, so that looks good. Let's look at, um, let's look at how we can do a transition on these. Okay. So let's look at the ice, for example. And so this is a gradient. And same way we're doing it here. Um, we just need um, our noise. We need some sort of blending. So a smooth step works fine. And then we need to put our gradient into the value and our noise into the min. And then that can become our alpha. Now let's see what that looks like. All right, let's see that. Oh, wow. Immediately a lot better. Look at that. Not, it actually feels like the snow is like melting on the edges. That looks really, and on the walls too, it blends way nicer. You can really see it here, it's very drastic. Um, I think that looks awesome. And once again, you can use, you can experiment with what kind of noise you want to use. Maybe you use a different texture. Maybe you use a world aligned noise or you use the 3D noise function that I showed you earlier. Just ex experiment with it and see what looks good. Uh, I mean, just adding some sort of noise already looks fantastic. Um, let's just, I mean, for fun, let's, let's look at a harsh gradient. So I'll plug this into X and I'll plug this R into the Y. Put that into the alpha and let's see what it looks like when it's really harsh. All right. Okay. So this one, <laughs> this one is very drastic, um, but it might be something that you want. I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting to see. Um, just look at this. It's very, 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 very harsh. But I don't know. I feel like I feel like this kind of works with the ice, like the ice is taking over. Um, and remember, you can like blend these however you want. Like you could have sharp on the stone part and then soft on the ground parts. Um, all you have to do is just put this gradient elsewhere. Uh, you know, maybe you create. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of blending strategy you can do. It just it's just the order that matters. Um, that's also pretty cool to see. Now there's one more thing I wanted to cover in this video, and that was just adding more texture variation to your to your slopes. So right now it's like, okay, we have stone and then we have grass. What if I want something in between the stone and grass? Okay. Um, so we're gonna make a secondary slope mask. And this one. This one I'm going to use basically a copy of this. Got to move things around because I'm running out of space. Um, we're going to change the name of the parameters so these are different. So I'll do fall off power two and then cheap contrast two. And so this will be slope mask two to stick with our naming. Um, and then we're going to use a smooth step again, just for fun. Why not? And we'll just put that in value. No, that's in the min. Sorry, my bad. Value. And we're basically just going to add another layer to our paint. But I want another texture. So let me go ahead and add a new set of textures. I believe this one's called Scree. Yeah, we'll do Scree 1, D, Scree, N, and then Scree, S. Okay. And so we'll name this Attributes Scree. Let's go to our default material. Let's add it to our default material. So I'm going to get my attributes scree. 
I'm going to get my second slope mask. And so what I want to do is I want this to be blended with our stone and then blend that with the grass. So the grass should always be on top. That makes sense. So I would imagine we want scree to be A and then stone to be B. Mm, no, we want stone to be A and scree to be A, scree to be B, like that. Let me move those over. And then we'll put that in the blend attributes notes. And we'll take our slope mask two and put it there. Now, since we haven't changed the parameters, we're not going to really see anything yet. We might see a little bit, but we probably won't see much. Um, so let me go ahead and compile those shaders and we will get back to that. All right, so let me pull this landscape out and we're going to adjust our parameters. So let me go expand this a bit. We see these twos. So I'm just going to adjust these. Um, you'll see when I increase the contrast, these rocks start to creep up around the edges, which is really, really cool. <laughs> um, we're going to decrease the fall off power. And you'll immediately see that these rocks are starting to creep where the, the stone used to be. Only on this material, on the, on the default grass material, because I haven't put it in the other ones, in those paints. But yeah, this actually looks pretty cool. Um, maybe we decrease the contrast a bit. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and that, that's a great way to add more life to your textures. It looks so bland before, but now it has rocks. And they just kind of like weave in and out of the grass. It looks kind of cool. Now, an additional thing that you should consider is if you have a height texture, say it's a height texture that's like used for a bump map or something of that sort, you can use that as your noise texture in this circumstance, and it'll actually work a lot better than any other noise texture because it's fit to your texture. and it's just going to, you know, transition a lot, a lot sh more sharply um, along with that texture. So if if this scree texture had a height noise, I would be able to show you, but it doesn't. But you can imagine like these rocks being on top and then just like outside of the rocks being grass um, or stone or whatever the transition is. Um, it would look phenomenal. So if you do have a height texture, a bump map, whatever. Use it here. It's a great opportunity to use it here. Um, but that's about it for this tutorial. I mean, it's such a subtle change, but it makes a huge difference. Uh, I hope you appreciated this knowledge, and I hope that you stick around for future episodes. Um, if you have any specific landscape tutorial needs, drop them in the comments. I'm still making this series, uh, unless you're watching this many, many months later. But even then, I'm still going to be making episodes if there's something of interest. So drop in the comments. I will be reading them and I will be adjusting future episodes to accommodate those needs. Um, but anyways, <laughs> have a great day and good luck creating.